Welcome back to this Computer Science One video series. In this module, we'll cover file input and output. This module is split into four parts. In this first part, we'll give an overview of files and file I.O. and cover how to do simple plain text file output in C. In the second part, we'll cover how to do file input. We'll cover the differences between plain text and binary files in the third part and conclude with a couple of exercises. A file is a unit of memory stored in a computer. Usually we think of files as being stored on disk, but that's not all. The following are also files. Directories are files. Buffers such as the standard input and output streams are files. Programs when stored on disk or even when they're running are files. And network sockets are also files. To transmit data to a remote computer, you establish a socket and then write to it as you would a file. To receive data, you read from the same socket as you would from a file. Files can be plain text, which is what we'll mostly work with, or binary. Plain text files are typically intended for human readability, while binary files are not. However, there are several formats that are plain text, but also not intended for human consumption. We've already seen CSV data, or comma-separated value data, but there's also XML, JSON, and special data-encoded files. Let's just take a look at a few of these formats. Here's a collection of CSV data. The first line is a header line, indicating the name of each column, and each subsequent line, or row, is one record of data. Each of the four tokens is delimited by a comma. Now here's that exact same data, but represented using JavaScript object notation, which is a key value pair representation. It's still human readable, but this format is more intended to be processed by a computer. Here's XML, or extensible markup language, representing the same data. Each piece of data is marked up with a tag. Multiple tags are collected in a parent tag, and a collection of tags is included in one root tag. Here's yet again the same data encoded using Base64 encoding. This is certainly not intended for human consumption. Each one of these formats presents both advantages and disadvantages. If you wanted to process any of these formats, it would be best to use a library to do so. Even CSV formats are surprisingly complex to do right. In general, to process files, whatever format they might be, you have to either read from a file, in which case you're doing input, or write to a file, in which case you're doing output. For either one of these tasks, there are three basic steps to follow. First, you have to open the file. Then you can process it by reading it or writing to it. Then you close the file. In C, working with files is supported using a file pointer. File star points to a location in a file stored somewhere in memory. This is defined in the standard library and it's case sensitive. The fopen function, or fopen, allows you to open up a file and returns a file pointer that you can then work with. Initially, the pointer will point to the beginning of the file. As you read through the file, the pointer is updated automatically. The fopen function may fail for any number of reasons. You may not have permission to read the file, or you may not have permission to write to a certain file. If fopen fails, it will return null, which you can then check. A file pointer is also sometimes referred to as a file handle. Here's the signature of the fopen function. It takes two arguments, both strings. The first argument is the path and the name of the file that you want to open. The second argument is the mode that you want to open it up for. For file input, you'll want to open it up for reading, so you use R. For file output, you want to open it up for writing, so you use W. Let's demonstrate. First, let's open up a file, data.txt, in the current directory for reading. We provide the file name, along with R, the mode. If we wanted to open up the same file for writing, we would instead do the following. You can also open up files using relative paths. This opens up a file that is two directories up in the directory structure called data.txt.
This would open up a file in the current working directory, then within a subdirectory called data, then the file called data.txt. You can also use what are called absolute paths. By beginning the string with a forward slash, I'm going all the way to the root of the file system. Then under that, there's a directory called etc or etsy. And under that, there's a file called passwd. This is actually a system file that contains information about users on the system. Let's demonstrate the actual usage here. When we run this, it'll output opening file successful. We can read from this file, but we cannot write to it. Only the system or root can do that. Because it was unsuccessful, it returned null. As we saw, your program may not have the proper permissions to either read or write to a file. Thus, it's necessary to do error checking for the returned pointer. However, if you do have permissions, then opening up a file for writing will generally create a new file if it does not already exist. However, if you open up a file for writing that does already exist, it'll be clobbered, meaning that as you start writing to the file, you will overwrite any data that was already stored in it. Failure to properly close a file may also lead to data corruption or other problems. It's a simple enough task to close a file using fclose. In the examples, we worked with various paths, both relative and absolute. You've also been working with these in lab. Just as a reminder, the period refers to the CWD or current working directory. The single forward slash refers to the root of the file system. The double period refers to the parent directory. In general, the directory structure of a file system is a tree structure and you can traverse up and down it by delimiting each directory using a forward slash. On a Windows system, you may need to use a backslash. To conclude, we'll cover how to output to a plain text file. This is a simple and easy task because you already know how to do it. You use a function called fprint, which has the exact same functionality as printf and sprintf that we've already covered. All of the placeholders and tricks can be reused here. The only difference is that it takes an additional first argument, the file pointer that you want to output to. Let's take a look. We'll open up a file for writing. We'll use fprintf to print to the file a simple message. We can also print data to a file using placeholders. Once you're done writing data to a file, always remember to close it. Failure to properly close a file may lead to corrupted data. Now it didn't print anything, but it did create a brand new file. Full of the contents that we printed to it.